All right, everybody, welcome back to the Opie Sports Podcast. Today, we're going to talk about the uh, way too early Eastern Conference uh, rankings for next year in the yeah, first segment. Wait, and not then, way too early because uh, it's only starting in a couple months. <laughs> and then in our second segment, we're going to do a Celtics recap, uh, their experience in the bubble and the overall season. And with that, we have a uh, – here's our sponsor. All right. This segment is brought to you by Celsius. Celsius powers active lives every day with essential functional energy. Celsius is here to help you stay active and focused on your goals. Look for Celsius in our upcoming videos and try it for yourself and let us know what you think. All right. All right. Let's get into it. So uh, Eastern Conference. So this past year, I'm just going to read the standings or the like the playoff standings. Um, and then well, we'll wait, can I just say first? Yeah. Before you say that, before we even get that far, we can say the Heat ended up in the finals as yeah. a five seed in the East. And we're, that's definitely going to come up in this conversation. But it's just interesting because I really don't see them having – I don't really know. I think it's going to be interesting next year. But I just want to say, well, yeah. That didn't make sense, but anyway. No, because uh, if you're talking about standings, it's like that stands yeah. out amongst them all because it's like yeah, they well, came from five. We'll get, in, we'll get into that. Uh, so we got the Bucks at the one seed, obviously, with the best record in the league. Then you have Celtics. the Raptors, uh, then Celtics, then Pacers, which the Heat were better than the Pacers. They should – it's just uh, – TJ Warren went off in the bubble, so he couldn't take – you get past them. But uh, – so then it goes the Heat at the five, six, Sixers at the six, Nets at the seven, and Magic at the eight. So this is my thing. We get talk. I'm going to talk more of the, the magic of the- went. What magic, did they go? They went uh, 33 and 40. 30, yeah. 33 and 40. Made the That's playoffs. so bad. Yeah. So basically I find this year, I think this year it's going to be, uh, I think it's gonna be very different. I think the playoff teams are going to be, they're going to switch it up a little bit. And I think with starting with the top three, I think it's probably going to be, uh, Bucks again. I think the Raptors will drop off, especially after the Celtics expose them in the playoffs. I think people are starting to figure out Siakam because the Celtics absolutely exposed him in that that series. And I think it'll probably get the Nets will probably get the two seed with. The Did you say the Celtics exposed him, or you just say he just didn't look like himself? No, we exposed him. We definitely exposed him. He 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 could. We figured out his move, his stupid spin move that he does every time. But. Uh, I think we go – so I think then – I think it goes – Bucks or no, I think Bucks will probably either stay at one or drop down to two. And I think the Raptors – or the, not the Raptors – or the Raptors will drop probably to like the four or the five. Celtics, I think, are pretty much like going to stay around three. Um, I think the net, Nets will be one or two. It's going to be between them and the Bucks probably for one or two seed. I mean, hopefully the Celtics bump up. but And then I think Heat probably take – the four or the five, which it's between the Raptors. Um, I think, it, I well, I can say I do think the Bucks are going to be good, but I think they're going to be the two. Uh, I yeah, think the what, I think the Nets are going to be net, one. If the Nets stay healthy. I think it all if, the, on the Nets if the Nets stay healthy, I think they're one. And I think the Celtics and Bucks are fighting for number two. Yeah. Um, I think this offseason is going to be very telling for the Bucks because you have Giannis, who could possibly leave after this season coming up so yeah. it's kind of telling as to what they do this offseason if they try to bulk the team up or what they try to do if they try to make one final push to make a mistake so it'll be interesting um so i still but i still think the celtics and the bucks are fighting for number two um i think that i i think the heat are going to be in a race with the 76ers for four 76ers? no i think they're in the, they're still in a race with the raptors for four I think the Sixers. Oh, I didn't even think about the Raptors. I, I kind of just eliminated. I just was looking at the teams. Yeah, I think, uh, the, I think the Raptors. Stay, I think Sixers stay around six, the six seed. I don't think they move up that much. Unless um, they have a huge we'll turnaround. See. Unless they have a good, like a good, like free agent pickup or like a. That's good what I'm draft. saying. I think it depends on what they do in the offseason. And yeah, then I think. I don't um, think they're going to end up doing much. I don't think. Doc Rivers makes I got much. Nets, Bucks, Celtics. I'm going to, I'm going to be a, I'm going to be a Celtics fan here. Nets, Celtics, Bucks. Raptors, Heat, 76ers, Pacers, and I'm probably going to go Wizards because – Oh, Wizards. I, I bet the Wizards make the playoffs this year because John Wall's back. Because John Wall's going to come back. and they'll probably, I, they'll probably have a fairly a decent draft again. They, 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 I mean, 
And I mean, I like I like Bradley Beal, and yeah. I mean, I think they have a good young mm-hmm. cast around those two. So, um, so I think, hold on, hold on. I think so. My Bob guys, Bobby Portis, and stuff like I'm that. I'm probably going Nets. Bucks, or he's on the Knicks now, but yeah, Nets, Bucks, Celtics. I'm probably gonna go Heat, um, then Raptors. Or Heat or Raptors? Any trouble? I'd Where? Go, what? Where? Four at four. I'd probably go Heat, then Raptors at five, Sixers at six, then probably I I think Wizards at seven. What about the Pacers? Uh, I think Pacers drop because they're probably going to trade. They're probably going to make a trade. I think they drop to like eight. Um, and I don't think they'll be as effective. But I think, I think they're going to end up being either the eight or the nine. Them and the Wizards are going to be fighting for that last spot. I think it's going to come down, probably end up being well, no, the Wizards. I, I, think the, I, get the, I think the Magic get knocked. That's a, And I think the... The, the Magic are going to blow. They're going to do the same thing they do every year. They start off like 6-0. and Every Magic fan freaks out because Aaron Gordon has a couple good dunks. And Terrence Ross looks like Raptors Terrence Ross, who has insane hops because I still like Terrence Ross, but he's not that good. And then they're going to freak out, tell us all how they're going to make the playoffs and be so sick. And then they're going to be like the 11th seed or the either 8 through 11 and get knocked out in the first round. It's the same thing that happens like every single year. I yeah. think – but I can say – I think the Atlanta Hawks are going to be in competition to either be probably 10, 9, or 8. I don't know. I, th- I think I – think the, the, Because they're going to have the – Wizards, The Wizards move up to 7, and I think it's going to be a battle between – 7. Pacers. 7. What? Where the hell do you get 7 for the Wizards? Dude, they made the 9 seed last year with just Bradley Beal. Yeah, at 25 wins, bro, because the Magic had 33. Okay. John the Hall Nets, Hall. the Nets had thirty-five wins, and they didn't have KD or Kyrie. So yeah. okay, well, I'm saying I don't think the Pacers are going to be effective this year. I think they probably okay. Be- but wait, can we just do something else first? Out of the teams that didn't make the playoffs, who do you think is moving up? Maybe not making the playoffs. The Wizards. I think the so I think the Wizards are going to be either nine or eight. I think, I think the Wizards are going to be seven. I think the I think the Hawks are going to be ten or nine. Uh, yeah, Hawks will probably be around ten. Uh, I, think I think that Pacers, the, Pacers, I, think gonna be nine. I think the Knicks are going to blow again unless Knicks they get going, Knicks are going to dead lap. Knicks are going to de- or either last or, or 14. Knicks now. getting ready. Knicks getting ready to go sign Kelly Olynyk to a max contract as if we don't know what they're doing. Uh, <laughs> they have big moves coming. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know. We'll see. Cause it'll depend on their draft pick, but I mean, like if they get LaMelo ball, I mean, you don't really know what they're going to do, but Who? the Knicks, I don't know. I feel like Lamelo they can't turn that team around. He needs I mean, he's really, team. really good, but like they also have RJ Barrett. You got to think about that. RJ I think Barrett he had, a good he had such a bad like rookie year and his oh, standard. No, I don't know. I just he's just on a trash team. He's on a bad team. That's what I was about to say. Like they totally brought him down because he had nobody good around him. It's not like he could learn from anybody. He had nobody around him, and his coach well, he sucked. Averaged, he averaged fourteen points a game, five rebounds, and three assists. So he was like Tatum. That's not Tatum. I'm saying like 13, 14 points. Like Tatum averaged more than that as fresh. Or no, he didn't. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. He had like he averaged like 13 points a game. And sure? then he no, he and then he averaged like 18. Uh, it, in the, well, yeah, maybe I don't know. Here, hold on. I remember because Donovan Mitchell and Ben Simmons both. Donovan Mitchell was averaging like oh, 20. Yeah, he did. He averaged 14. He averaged 13.9. So he averaged point. He averaged point three more. Yeah, that's not my point. I'm just saying, like, he has potential. It's just one year. Um, but but that was also Tatum on a good team. RJ Barrett on a crap team. But I I don't think RJ Barrett is going to be a Tatum. But I think he can be a serviceable player. He definitely I think he could be pretty good. Paired with another like young star, they could be a good young duo in the league. That's why I'm and saying honestly, I think Lamelo can help that team. Only, yeah, but they don't have the other pieces to do it. Well, they have Kevin Knox. They have uh, Mitchell Robinson. Yeah, I think Mitchell Robinson's getting traded, but I mean, I think he's really good. I don't know why they would trade him. Uh, I think the Cavs are going to suck. Um, actually, I don't know. Their their guards could could definitely take a step forward. Well, if, um, they draft, if they draft someone effective, that if they draft Edwards, then maybe. Well, what what pick do they have? I don't know. I mean, they took last, so I'm assuming they have the odds to get the number one pick. Oh look, what are the Westing standings? Uh, the Warriors have. Yeah. I don't, didn't they already do the lottery? Yeah, so it's Minnesota, then Golden State, Charlotte, Chicago. Cleveland is five. They're projected to take Obi Toppin. He'd be a big. He'd be that. That'd probably help. 
Uh, I mean, yeah. I don't know. I feel like they need a small forward, though. I mean, Obi Toppin, 6'9", he can probably move down to a small forward. He plays – he's pretty much – he's a very versatile 6'9 player. Nice. Uh, but, I uh, think – okay, so if I had to go 1-15 to 15 with the East, Nets, Celtics, Bucks, Raps, Heat, Sixers. Um, who am I missing? Buck, uh, Nets. Nets, Nets, Bucks, Celtics, Raptors, Heat, Sixers, Pacers, Wizards, I guess. All right. Uh, yeah. And then, and then I think probably, um, I think the Hawks are going to be in contention for nine, uh, along with the along with the Magic. Probably will be probably like ten or eleven. I think the Bulls will probably get better. Uh, they have a young team. I think they'll probably get better. Um, I think the Knicks are going to stay stagnant and suck. I think the Cavs are going to stay stagnant and suck. I think the Pistons are just so bleh that they're just going to be whatever. And, yeah, I don't really see. So, here's my thing. Here's mine. The only substitute in the East for the playoffs for me is really the Wizards. Like, the rest of those teams, I think, could easily make it again. Like, I don't really see any big changes. So Maybe just the order. So, this is mine. I got – Nets at one, healthy Nets at one. I just want to healthy Nets at one, Bucks at the two, Celtics at the three. Two the the Celtics and Bucks here either way, but I'm probably gonna go Bucks at two just because the only reason I'm saying Celtics at two is because the Celtics are fully healthy and they can add a veteran in free agency. Yeah, and I but I think I I don't know. I I think the or if the Bucks can have another season like last year, they'll probably be the two seed. But I mean, I'm not um, worried about it if they blow the rest in the playoffs again anyway. Yeah. And then at the four, I'm probably going with the Heat. I I, I just I know, I don't want to be like I don't want to be like trying to like ride a hype train, but I think just watching them play in Who? watch the Heat, watching Harrow and Robinson develop like that, and, and be able to play like that in the playoffs. I, it's not even those two that makes me think that the Heat are going to be so good for a while. It's Bam. Yeah, no, I know, but I'm saying those watching those players be able to develop in the playoffs and play that well in the playoffs gives me hope because especially in the bubble like i hate people that say that are saying it's a a, it's an asterisk it's a good asterisk that was probably so hard you have no fan involvement you have nothing to pick you up at all all. nothing you have to build your own momentum yeah so let me finish my thing so then after the raptors and then i think sixers stay at six uh, and then at seven, I'm going the Wizards. I think with John Wall coming back, he's gonna, they're going to take a, a pretty good step. I don't know. He's coming off some serious injuries. That's the one thing. Like he's come if, off if, big injuries a lot in his career. In his I know, career. but the one thing is he's not any younger, and he's relied on his speed a lot and his athleticism. If and he's, he's been a, and he he's been away different. and he's been away from the game for a long time. He's still playing. I've seen videos and working. On I'm just saying he's been away from the NBA game for a long time at this point. Absolutely. For like a year, so is KD. So is like basically. Kyrie. He's not KD. He's not Kyrie. Okay, but anyway, um. So then eight. I'm. Um, and he makes like forty two million dollars a year. We're not gonna talk about that though. Eight. Um. Eight. I'm probably going with the Pacers. The the Pacers drop are gonna drop to eight. I think I had the Wizards at eight. So I mean, I think I had the Pacers yeah. at seven. So yeah, it's give or take. And then at nine, I'm probably. Uh. Probably I want to see something real quick. You can keep Honestly, talking. I think the Pistons might hop up. They might – not to nine, probably ten, actually. So, I think the Hawks will go up to nine. Pistons at ten. Bulls at 11. Hornets at 12. Um, well, okay, can I just say – I'm looking at – Oh, wait, I'm missing the Magic. So, no, I think the – I think it's going to go Hawks at nine. Uh, Pistons at ten. Magic at 11. Bulls at 12, Knicks at 13. Wait, hold on a minute. I'm just looking at the uh, roster for the for the Wizards. I actually like their team. I mean, you have you have Beal. I love Bertans. I love the way Rui Hachimura was playing. Thomas Bryant's developed really well. Uh, Amahimi is whatever. Um, and then you have Jerome Robinson. He's all right. Shabazz Napier is all right. Uh, you have obviously you have John Wall and Bonga played okay for them. I mean, they have an all okay, they have an okay team, like they have a end of the playoff team, yeah. All right, so 
Um, Hold on. Let, me let me look at something else real quick. Fine, but I think that. You mean? Let me just look at something else real quick. I want to look at this. Uh, where is it? Oh, here it is. Because we were talking about the paces and we were talking about the magic or the. Uh, and that I just want to look at their roster real quick. I mean, yeah, I I still think the paces are better, just on paper. Yeah, I think the I think the paces are better on paper. You have Holiday, I, I, Connell. No, I think they make a trade. They're, they're gonna who do you think they're going to trade? I don't want to go into a rabbit hole about this, but who do you think they're going to trade? Oladipo Probably Miles. Turn, Oladipo and Miles Turner are getting traded this offseason. One of them, or maybe both of them. But, I don't know, man. We'll get into that for All another right. one, but I think that just All right. That just, that wraps just about wraps up uh, this segment, and we're going to come back. We're going to talk about the uh, Celtics and their performance in the bubble and this season for them and what you know, what we thought that was going to happen and their final results and all that stuff, disappointments or whatever we think. So, uh, yeah, be right back. All right. All right. This segment is brought to you by Drink True. Use the code OFFBEAT for 20% off your order. The link is in our Instagram bio at OFFBEAT underscore sports. Go check them out. Uh, Drink True believes in challenging our human potential through nutrition. Their products are naturally formulated to help you feel good and perform better. They're a company based out of Boston. And uh, look for Drink True in our upcoming videos. They can be found at drinktrue.com, Amazon, and select CVS locations. Be sure to try them out. Use the code. Let us know what you think. All right. And uh, welcome back. So we're going to do the second segment of this episode and we're going to talk about the Celtics and their performance in the bubble and uh, what we thought of their team this year. And yeah, just kind of how we thought it was going to go for them and their overall performance. So I can start off by saying, hold on, hold on. I've been, I've been very, very quiet since the end of the season because that was devastating for me. I was so into that team, but I, in, they as, pissed me off so bad, you well, know that. As as the, yeah, as the Stonehill kids can attest, I was very uh, psychotic during these playoffs, as because of I've been I was so in like this team I felt so invested in because I felt like they really had a chance, and and I think I I don't I'm not I don't want to say I'm disappointed. I feel like they could have done better, but if you but and you think about it big picture wise, I don't know a single person that said they were even going to be they were going to be in the Eastern conference finals this year. Never mind. Never mind. Have a chance at like winning it and making the finals. I don't know. I think I can say, I, I said don't... that I said that because I'm a psychotic Celtics fan, but I know a lot of people counted them out. I mean, looking back, I'm pretty sure I kind of thought with all the talent that they had on that team, that they were going to make a run at the finals because the East wasn't as crazy, and I, I mean, it was just this was their year. They had everyone healthy. Obviously, that didn't go as planned. You had some injuries here and there with guys, Kemba, and whatever. But and I mean, I was I thought they played okay in the bubble. Like I, I you know, I was really mad when they lost. I well, I don't hate the Celtics, but I hated the team that 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 played in that Eastern Conference Finals. And the team that played those two games in that Raptor series, because I felt like they just kept letting games go. They did become gamers for like a while, for like a little bit in these games. And they take these big leads and they'd be like, yeah, look at us. Like we can do this. Like we are this team, like this powerhouse. And then they'd be like, all right, we're just going to coast. And I didn't like that. That's why I was so mad. I'm like, just play that way for 48 minutes. And I can't, and after that, after I can't, I can't hear the slander of Brad Stevens. It, I give me. Well, a okay. Wait, I get... hold on, hold on. Let me speak. Let me finish my spiel. I have two things to say. I can't hear the slander about Brad Stevens. That is not on him. That is on. I think that was, and I don't want to hear like he he didn't adjust to the defense. I think it was an effort thing, and I think it was a listening thing because there's no way a coach is not trying to make adjustments to a defense. I think he was trying to make adjustments and he wasn't being listened to because they were getting cocky, as you could see by their blown leads. And I think, I think, I don't even know if it was cocky. I I think it was just like, all right, we don't need to try anymore. This was our effort. That's what I'm saying. They're getting cocky with the lead, which I think, so they didn't feel like they had to adjust, which I think, I honestly think Stevens was trying. I don't think it was on him. I think it was on the player's effort. The only time that I think it was on him. I don't know. All right. 
And then my second thing is I don't want to hear any slander on Hayward. I don't want to hear a single word that he missed his son's birth to be with that team. He gave it all for our team. Like that is I mean, I never was crapping on Hayward. I thought he had a good season. I and I think I never he, I mean when he came back, he definitely he, you could definitely see he was a little more hesitant, but he still he still helped. <laughs> I mean like his ankles aren't doing so well, but yeah. yeah. But after after a full like like or not full, like after a good off season of like rest, he came back he came back in like three was it three weeks? Or four week four weeks on that on an injury like injury that he probably should have taken like six weeks. He was not ready. And he but he decided to come back early, miss his son's birth. I don't know. I mean, I'm not. I'm not mad at Hayward. Team. Look, I'm just yeah, saying. Yeah, but I know. I'm saying on Twitter, I read all this crap about Stevens and Hayward. And I'm like, that's not what we should be worried about. I would be more mad at Stevens than I would at Hayward if I had to pick one. Because I think I, I get mad at the fact that if you're the coach and you see this blown lead after blown lead after blown lead, there comes a point where you have to make some sort of point about it. Like, I don't know how you just let that happen over and over again. But at the same time. Like, I don't know, you can't control everything that happens on the court, not the court, but at the same time, you can't – remember that whole report that came out with Marcus Smart and them, like, screaming at each other in the locker room? Yeah, I, which I'm not – Needed to happen. But at the same – yeah, okay, you could say it needed to happen, but as a coach, the report sounded horrible if you're looking at Brad Stevens' way because it sounds like he couldn't control his team. And you don't want to have a coach that can't control his team and whose players think that they can walk all over the coach which is a lot of NBA players because in the NBA, sometimes you think coach doesn't really matter because it's just about talent in that league, which is true. Like you need a lot of talent to win, but it's tough because it's over and over again. We've seen Brad Stevens performs best when he's not supposed to, when he doesn't have the talent, all those, like we believe Celtics teams with Isaiah Thomas and all them that were not believed in were the best teams. Those were the best teams with Brad, you know, in my opinion, because they weren't supposed to win and they did. But now this team, it's supposed to win and they haven't really performed up to expectation in the last couple of years. Like, yeah, you could say this season specifically, their expectations weren't as high. But at the same time, they went out and they added like an all NBA caliber point guard. It's not like they didn't get anybody. It's like they didn't improve their team. Sure, they lost Al Horford, but, you know, I think Daniel Tice was serviceable this whole season. So, I, and I don't, oh, that's the other person I can't stand slander from. You guys, they're slandering the wrong people. Tice, Tice played awesome. He played, he played he his worked, role. He played his he worked, role. He worked his butt off. He's playing against all these like good big men, and he's he's working his butt off. The he only had, problem that Tice had is foul trouble. That's the only thing he has. But I he mean, had that, the, he had the highest defensive rating in the like since they entered the bubble, out of anyone anyone in the league. He had the highest defensive rating, and he's a small big playing against all these very good big men, and he had the highest. That's incredible. Yeah, I, I, I'm not. I'm not slandering him. I mean, I'm not. People are like, oh, we need to get a big man, and I'm like, I mean, I'm not slandering Tice like completely. Like, I definitely have, but no, that's I'm not saying just... you are. I'm not saying. I'm saying. I, I'm just reading all this stuff, and I'm like, you guys don't understand. If you actually like all these, like, I can't even tell. Like, are you watching the games? Because if you're watching the games, you can see the effect Tice has on the team. And I think I he's like, good. People, are, I just people think are he's like, not. Look, he's, I think Tice is good. Perf- he's the perfect big for that system, and and. And they're like, they're like, oh, we need I mean, to yeah, get- this year in 65 games, Tice put up 9.2 points, 6.6 rebounds, and 1.7 assists. The only problem I think – Look at his defensive rating. I know that. I know. I know. All I'm saying is the only thing that with Tice is he's not getting a lot of boards, and that's something that the Celtics need. That's the one thing. Which because- I, think that, I think now that Robert Williams is healthy, that will help. But I think – I mean, yeah, we'll see. I'm still not on the whole hype train with him. I think he's good, but – I still think I, they need like a they need an elite rebounder on that team and they don't have it. But I think and I I'm having trouble with the whole. Like, and I don't really like. like we need to I go like get a star. That. We need to go get a star center. I'm having trouble with that. I mean, I never like, said we needed a star. Like, I didn't say that. you. I didn't say you. I'm talking about all the stuff I read on Twitter because I've been very quiet since. No, but me and you had that whole debate a couple months ago yeah. about yeah. Hayward and. Capello. But, Capello is not a, not a good fit for the Celtics, and I'm leaving it at that. I just meant a rebounder. I just want someone who can go get boards and pass the ball back out to Tatum for another shot. I just mm-hmm. want someone to get the Celtics second chance points because I think Honestly, that's something I'd, that they want. Prefer, I'd prefer them not to have the shots. I would prefer them driving because they're better. They And it opens up – I feel like it opens up their game more when they're driving. But anyway, I don't – and, like, 
people saying like we need to go out and get a big like I honestly I would uh, like a Miles Turner I'm fine with because he can spread the floor and grab boards. Yeah, I mean I'm not mad. I don't. I, don't I think care. him, but I think people are like we need to go get. I'm like, but we don't. Tice was great this year. Tice was not even close to the problem this year, and I don't. And I think I just. I think don't think people, Tice as a player was the problem. I think it was just the fact that like people just wanted someone else to have too. I don't think it was like. I think they're putting Tice the blame sucks. I think, I think it's just. But I think people are putting the blame in the wrong places, and I think. If you if you watch the games, if you understand the game, you understand basketball, you understand Celtics basketball, you should know what Tice is doing out there was honestly better than I would say last year's last couple of years Horford's, and I think and, uh... and I'm, I'm gonna get signed, not not Horford with Isaiah, I think Horford with like Tatum and uh, or uh, uh... Horford with Tatum and Kyrie, not that not... I mean that playoff run a couple years ago. He, oh, not that one. I'm talking about last. I'm, I mean last. You year. mean just last year, right? Yeah, just last year. I don't. Okay. I think Tice's play this year was much better than Horford's play last year. I wouldn't say much, and I, but and I'd I'll say stick, better. I'll stick to that. Any, and I, I think his effect in the court was much better than, was much better, or better than Horford's last year. And I, yeah, I mean, this that. isn't really a debate I'll on slander, like Tice. I'll get slander from the overhyping Horford <sighs> fans, but. Bro, I know. I get your point about Tice. I get it. Like, I'm I know. Saying, I I'm not saying you're disagreeing with me. I'm I know. You're just that. going off about, like, Tice, dude. Like, I get Cause it. Because I can't I, – I can't even – like, I hate going on Twitter because all the stupid Celtics fans that barely watch the games and try talking sports. Well, no. Like, it's just like – it's just – I get your point. Like, I don't think Tice was bad. The only point I ever made was we need someone who gets more defensive boards because – No, don't... I know. I'm not even close to directing this at you. This no, is... I know that. I'm just telling you my – on it. Yeah. I don't think Tice is bad. I it's thought he like, played good. The bubble. Like these, the only yeah. the only problem the only problem that Tice has as a player is foul trouble and his size. He just lacks yeah, size. I, and I feel like some of the foul trouble is a little ref bias, but we won't go. Well, there. I don't know. I think he just sometimes he makes stupid decisions. I uh, yeah. I also think he complains a lot, which doesn't help his case. No, he's a total wuss bag. It's so annoying. But like, like but I like understand dude, why he's complaining a lot. But if he just He'd pro- it'd probably help him if he just – Well, not every time. You don't need to complain after every single call. Yeah, I know. You know that's what, what I'm mean? saying. I'm saying if he just probably was just like whatever. If you just shut your mouth and just keep playing, yeah. dude. Like, shut up. Nobody and cares. It, but like, like, yeah, no. It's call my, for the foul. My thing What's is more annoying like, to me is when he complains on a call that's not reviewable. It's like yeah. they're not going to take it back. Just shut up. Yeah, it's like – it's like I'm. It, my thing is with the whole, like, Twitter – like, with all the Twitter, like, crap, it's like – realistically these these like people that are tweeting don't understand the game of basketball enough to be making like like big opinions like that and i'm like if you understand the game you know his effect if you understand the game you know hayward's effect like i understood have, hayward's effect before yeah can i, I just know, say that, can i I'm go saying, back on something I'm saying, I'm saying like me and you understand like we know the game of basketball like we we know celtics basketball we know how the, the only reason i ever said playing. about trading hayward i never thought like i'm contract. not I'm, yeah, I'm not going back. Like, I'm not trying to go back over and over again, but I'm just trying to make a point. Like, to agree with you, I understand the value that Gordon Hayward brings because he is a good defender and he helps spread the ball and he's a wing player, but he's, you know what I mean? Like, he's just a very versatile yeah. player. I understand yeah. that. The only time I, the only reason I ever said straight Hayward is his contract is no, no. It's pretty I know, bad. I, I so if you wanted to get off that, especially because you need to sign Tatum this, this off season to a super max contract, probably. So, or something is it like this that. Season? Is it this? Yes, it's this off season. It's this off season. Yeah. So, uh, I, and, and I don't want to have like three max deals on four on your team. Like I know you have bird rights on them, so it really doesn't matter. But like you still have to pay. Like it's just in the long run, it doesn't work out for you because then it's like you got to pick somebody, and we already know it's going to be Hayward in the long run. Like, so mm-hmm. I don't know why you don't just get rid of him now and get something for him rather than have him opt into that deal. You know what I mean? I'm like, unless the only other point I can see, I'm not trying to go down a rabbit hole of next season or the seasons after that, but like you let him play out next season on his deal. You sign him to a smaller deal. He outperforms that smaller deal. He builds up his trade stock and then you trade him. Like I'm well, cool with that always, too. Well, well, what they could do, he could, they could have him opt out and then they could restructure a new contract. But That's I'm, what I'm thinking. Like I'm saying like if, whether they restructure, he plays on that deal and then restructures like whatever. Which, I just he wanna, might, he might do that for the team. I'm just saying whatever, whatever it comes down to before I want Danny Ainge for like to do what he did in 20, like 12, not, it's obviously not the same, but you realize this guy is falling off. You realize at some point he's not the same. He's not going to give you the production that you need. You have two young wings. 
you don't need him anymore specifically and you could survive without him go get something for him before it's too late that's all i'm saying yeah so uh, but, do you want to you give our final okay on our, our so i there? so yeah so we kind of went off yeah you have know, presidential debate night you have one minute uninterrupted yeah <laughs> yeah right you'll just all right, what's start up? interrupting me <laughs> um all right stop <laughs> uh give your final statement i i want i was really mad about the way that the Celtics ended their season uh i thought that miami embarrassed them i thought that they looked like absolute fools um i couldn't believe the way that they played in that series i mean it, it was just embarrassing watching them just fall apart like that hearing all the bad reports about the team in the bubble um, I know people will say that they needed that, but at the same time, it's like your team shouldn't need that. Like, that's not a good thing to need that. And, and I just, no, I, I mean, really, I meant they needed the, the kick in the ass in the locker and not the loss, but yeah, no, I don't mean the loss. I meant like the way that they all had to freak out each other in that huge blow up. I didn't like, like I got the point, but I didn't like that. Um, and I just think I didn't like the way they played against the Raptors. Uh, I can't believe they're blowing leads like that. It's like, I know you're a good team, but you're young. You don't have the experience yet. That's why, you know, I, I was disappointed. I wasn't mad at them for making. I wasn't disappointed in how far they got. I was disappointed in how they got to where they got because I just thought that they just, by the, you know the seam of their pants, like they just just barely made it. Like because the Raptors were giving them a run for their money, and you know I think they just they kept blowing games. They just kind of just barely made it by the Raptors. All right. I don't know. Yeah, I just so, don't like the way that it ended for them. So okay, well, I mean, obviously, I don't like the way that it ended, but it's because they lost. It's not the I, way that they ended with the loss. It's the way that they lost. It's like yeah. you you can't keep blowing leads and then just, let me let me get my let me get my uninterrupted final statement. You just interrupted me to stupid say your stupid statement. Yeah, because you started talking. Gordon Hayward's you, great, and not talk, to blame Brad Stevens, over, even though he he was, he clearly okay. got out coached. Okay. Yeah, but you talk. Let me give my final statement. So if you. My th- all right, I don't like the way they ended because it was a loss. I really think that Robert Williams is going to be huge this offseason. You stop. All right, so I don't. Like, Tremont I, Watt is just going to be stop. absolutely nasty. No, like, nobody's wait, no, nobody's ever nobody's, nobody's ever said that. No, I never said that. But anyway, Robert freaking Williams, bro. Stop. He's just dude. The next Jesus big Christ. Dude, stop it. <laughs> Holy shit. Let me fucking speak. All right, Javante Green, bro. I'm just kidding. I'll shut up. I swear to God, I'm going to leave. All right, so anyway, uh, I don't like the way that ended because it was a loss. But uh, if you, th- I think if you think about it overall, this season was a success. Or like I think they, you had some, you had some great development from Brown and Tatum. They looked like superstars. T- Kemba, Kemba looked great for the most part when he was healthy, and and I think he he did have a little bit of a rough time in the playoffs. But I'll chalk that up to not a lot of playoff experience, and I think. Next and he came back from that better. injury too. Yeah, and I think next next year will be much better for him. And I think, and I honestly, people forget we swept the Sixers, and I think that was huge. Uh, and I just think they were over the Sixers, bro. That was like depleted, but yeah. But honestly, we if we we have, I think if, I think if they have Ben Simmons, that series is totally different. Yeah, yeah, but like I think we still win in like six. But if we if we have TD Garden in that Eastern Conference Finals. We win that series, the, and I think that's 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 a big thing. And I and I I hope and I and I think, based on that this season, I think it's a success and it should be. Pro, I think Celtics fans should be feel pro like feel that it's promising to see our young studs growing into like stars in this league, and we'll probably have Brown and Tatum as all stars next year. Hopefully, Kemba will get another one, and we'll see where we're at then. It's gonna and, be an all star. What? Kemba's gonna be an all-star. I know. That's what I'm saying. I think I think we're gonna have three all-stars next year, which should be great. And I think honestly, I think that's I think that should just be it. Like I feel like overall season was good and just move on. We start again in January. Uh and we should be ready to go. So that's all I got. Yeah, I mean, uh, I kind of agree with you. I just we'll see. All I just all I want is them to play up to their potential and uh Yep. I saw them start to do it. I just didn't like the way that they uh, they let go of it and they played like a different team. So. Yeah. All right. Well, I think. That's Can I just, just say for both of us? Yeah. Before we wrap it up, the Celtics have always shown a lot of heart, and I think that's the thing that we always love about them is the way that they play with like grit. 
I hated seeing them get away from that. That was why I was so angry. So I just want to see that I, back on the team. I also think that's why Smart was angry, but so exactly. So we agree. Yeah. So, so we agree. Yep. So I think uh, that just about wraps up tonight's episode. So I think I was solid and. Uh, be sure to go. Uh, we're now on Apple Podcasts, so uh, make sure you go subscribe to us on there. And if you would rather like listen to it on there and not watch the videos, great. Uh, we are so. on Spotify too. So. Oh yeah, and Spotify. We've been on Spotify, but on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. If you guys want us to try to get, if you guys want us on Google Podcasts, any of the other podcast uh, ways to listen to it, please let us know if that's something that you listen to, and we'll do our best to get it on there. It's a little bit of a process, but. We can do our best to get it on there so you can listen to it. Obviously, we want everyone who wants to listen to it to be able to. So just let us know. Right. Shoot us a DM, email, something like that. All right. Yeah. Uh, go make sure you uh, like and subscribe and follow us on Instagram at offbeat underscore sports. Peace. Call up all Texas.